Isn't that a beautiful song? What a savior. And by the way, that is the, uh, the uh, from the album, The Power of a Changed Life from Faith Music Mission. And that was from Bailey Grove Baptist Church and a beautiful song. And I hope you'll contact those folks over at Faith Music Mission and get some of that music on your phone, on your tablet, on, on your computer that you could listen to on a regular basis, it would be a real blessing to you. And you can have their entire, the, the, their, the whole stock, everything they have for one small fee per month. You can contact them, they'll tell you about it. I don't work for them, but I love what they do. Well, today uh, we're talking about words to live by. Yesterday we talked about truth. And uh, Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the truth. And then he said, the word of God is truth. And we talked about that. That was a good, a good lesson yesterday. And I hope you'll get in the word of God, get that truth in your life. But today we're talking about the, the, the theme of wisdom. Today's word is the word wisdom. And over in the book of James, boy, here's a great memory verse for you. One that you ought to apply in your life on a daily basis. He says this in James chapter one and verse number five, he says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. That's pretty, that's a pretty good promise. Needing that wisdom. Well, I searched the scriptures and I, I went to my concordance and I looked and added them all up and all that kind of thing. And what I found is what I already suspected, and I think I already knew it, is that the book of Proverbs, the book that King Solomon, the wisest human man that ever lived, had written that book of wisdom, the book of Proverbs. And in that book of Proverbs, 234 times throughout the scriptures, is the word wisdom used, but in the book of Proverbs itself, 54 times a verse talks about this thing of wisdom. And I want to give you just a few of them today. I, I believe it will help you. I believe it will strengthen you, and it will be a blessing to you. And I'll just start out in chapter 1, 
And, and I'm going to read these first three verses. The Bible says, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. He said, that's what this book is really all about. It's about wisdom. Now, I'm only going to give you a handful of the verses today, but here's what I'd like to challenge you to do. I'd like to challenge you to get a good concordance and look up the word wisdom and go to the book of Proverbs where, where Proverbs starts and go in the, and then open your Bible to the book of Proverbs and mark every place in there where it uses the word wisdom. And then go back and read through it. And then memorize some of those verses. And when you're needing some wisdom, boy, just hold those verses before God and say, God, you promised wisdom and I need wisdom in this matter and please help me. But now here's the key now. When you ask God to give you wisdom and then to help you to understand that wisdom, you've got to be willing to do what God shows you to do when he gives you that wisdom. You've got to be willing and God's not going to tell you to do anything that's illegal or unkind or brutal or hurtful to others. God's going to lead you to be the wise man like King Solomon was and how he resolved the problems there and all the things that he did. So look at Proverbs chapter 1, verse number 7. They're so close together here. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. You know, I've talked to people before. I don't want to call anybody a fool, but I've talked to people before and I've told them, here's what the word of God says. And they say, well, I just don't want any of that. Well, in reality, I think they were fools. Well, I just think you're trying to trick me. I just think you're trying to uh, smooth something over, you know, whatever it is. That it, basically what they were saying is, I'm just not willing. I'm just not open. I don't want to know another perspective. I don't want to know what God thinks about it. My friend, that's not wisdom, that's foolishness. And so we've got to get in here. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now, if you find yourself just, I don't want other people telling me how to do it, you better be careful. Be careful. You're on the borderline here of being very foolish. And my, that could end real bad for you. Hey, turn on over to verse, chapter 3 and verse 13 of Proverbs. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. You see, the happiest people in the world are those who operate the way God wants them to operate. They operate in the wisdom of God with his knowledge, with his help, with his blessing. And then, and then you go on over to chapter number 4 and verse number 7. Listen to what it says. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. In other words, that's the bottom line. That's the main thing. That's what everything else has to be built on. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. My, how we need it. How I want, I want it in my life. I pray for wisdom all the time. I ask God to give me wisdom. People will come to me. I'm a pastor. People will come to me and, and they'll have uh, some idea and they want to know what my opinion about it is. And I say, man, I, I, I haven't had time to pray, but I don't know what my, I don't know what my opinion is yet. Let me ask God. Let me, and let's, if the Lord impresses my heart one way or the other, I'd like to be a help, but I, I'm, I need God. I need his wisdom. I need his help. And we go to the Lord. And many times the Lord will give me a good answer and a good help for somebody. And how important that is. Look over Proverbs chapter number 8. I, I'm just picking out a few of them right out here. But in chapter 8, verse 11, the Bible says this, For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. You see, we'll work hard for rubies or for diamonds or for jewels or for a bank account or, or for fame or for all kinds of other things. But God said, really, the greatest thing you can have is wisdom because it'll guide you through life. And, you know, we talked about happy is the man that findeth wisdom in the other verse. Hey, the happiest people I know are not necessarily the richest people I know. Some of them are happy, too, because some of them have wisdom, not just not just financial wisdom, but they have spiritual wisdom of walking with God and, and are serving him. But some people choose the material things of the world over serving God. And as a result, they may have a lot of money 
Or they may fall flat on their face, don't know, but they're not happy. They're not happy, they're never satisfied, and I could go on and on with that. And that's in, that one is in uh, Proverbs number 8 and verse number 11. For wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be compared to it. I, I could just go on and on. There's just so many of them. I, I've got two or three others, but I just have run out of time. I'm going to go one place over in the New Testament and in the book of Luke, chapter number 21 and verse number 13. Uh, let me back up just a little bit for that. It says, but before all these, they shall lay their hands on you. This is Jesus talking to his apostles. And he says, he said, there's going to be some people that don't like you. They're going to lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and to the prisons and being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. There, you, see, you know, there's people in the world today who hate Christianity and hate Christians because they're under conviction, I suppose. Or they don't want anybody else even suggesting that they may be wrong. And they don't want to believe the Bible. They don't want to believe God. They don't want to believe in Christ. And, and so as a result, they consider Christians the enemy in some cases. It says, you're going to be, you're going to, some of you are going to suffer that kind of persecution. He said, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. That is God's goodness. He had talked it earlier. And in verse 14, I'm in, I'm in the Gospel of Luke chapter 21. In verse 14, he says, Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. God said, look, if Jesus said, if you're saved, you're walking with me, you're doing my will, and you're persecuted because of it, don't even worry about what you're going to say. I'm going to, and when the time is right, I'll give you the words to say. They won't be able to resist them. You know what? God's on our side. That's an amazing thing. And God wants to use you. And there are many lost people out there who would become our team members, too, they would be on our side if we would have the courage and boldness to tell them about the Savior and to do it with wisdom, with kindness, with love, and the Holy Spirit dealing in their heart as we are yielded to him. Let God use you. Get that wisdom in your life. Again, see if you can practice that little, that little uh, challenge that I gave you about finding the concordance and looking up the word wisdom and go through Proverbs and just mark everywhere there's wisdom and ask God to help you get it in your life. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the, for the time we've had today on this Tuesday morning. I pray, God, that you'll bless, and I pray that this will be a great week for your honor and glory, and we give you the praise, and we ask you for wisdom to make the wise choices today. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let's see.